by playing in the Chicago Cup. Well, what do you think? still got hostages there. Are you pleased that he's out, sir? Of course. Do you have any hopes that we'll have additional um, hostages within the next uh, few days or so? Any indication? I haven't seen any indication of that. Mr. President, what should the next step of the United States government be to build on whatever signal might have been inherent in the release of Mr. Singh? I can just tell you that this has been a, this has been a great problem for us and it's been something that's very much in our minds and uh, we're not engaged in any negotiations with, uh, with the captors. I'm sure he must know who, who was uh, intervening. I just can't talk any further about it. Are they trying to manipulate the American election, do you think, sir? What? <laughs> trying to manipulate the American presidential election. Do I think that do it was Do you believe a... that the terrorists are trying to manipulate the American presidential election in some way to the hostages? Well, if they are, I hope they're on the right side. That's the right side. Mr. President, forgive me for my brashness, uh, but this appears to be our, would appear to be maybe the last uh, leadership meeting that we're going to have uh, during your presidency here, at least to discuss the legislative agenda. And as the one of those who've been here now for eight years, for their entire period of time, around this table, I just have to tell you what a rewarding experience it's been for those of us who've priv been privileged to sit around this table. Have you give us our charge each week or every other week or so, and then go out there and do the best we can. Now, Bob can speak from a little bit different perspective when they were in the majority, but we in the House have always been in the minority. Let me tell you, Mr. President, the only leverage we have had in the House of Representatives in the last eight years has been your leadership and what you've been able to do by supporting that valiant minority that we have in the House of Representatives. I just want to express my personal appreciation and thanks to you for what you've done by way of giving us the inspiration and the spree de corps to do the best we could, even in a minority role. And of course, Bob can speak for himself from the Senate's vantage point, but that's our view from the House. We yeah, thank you, yeah, Mr. President, yeah, yeah. for what you've done. Thank you very much. Can I just say, Mr. President, America's a better place because you've been here. And we're all proud to have been a part of it. And uh, we'd go the extra mile for you anytime, just as you've done for our country. I might consider adjourning the meeting.
press one. Well, I had to think. You gotta get the drug bill through. Uh, well, no, I've I've got to start the meeting. Today. <laughs> 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 I am most grateful for what I've heard, and I've been very proud of the relationship that we have all had for these several years. And now that the 13 annual appropriations bills have been enacted, and I commend all of you for that achievement, I think it's time for the Congress to go home. <laughs> right. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Before you do, I want to urge the Senate to pass a responsible drug bill. The House passed a good bill 12 days ago to strengthen our fight against drugs, but it's been sitting on the Senate calendar for days. And I urge the Senate to pass the drug bill so that it can be quickly conferenced and enacted, and then I'll wish the 100th Congress a very hearty adieu. <laughs> And get some judges approved, too. Nice, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I hope to get them this week. Nick Brady to the cabinet table. If anybody can keep the treasury sound, he can. And once again, I want to thank all of you for the fine job you did in getting those separate, 13 separate bills. And Bob, you deserve our special thanks for your leadership in getting those bills moving that ran some last minute trouble in the House. We salute your statesmanship. Now, if we can get a few more things done, we can go spend some time getting Republicans elected to the House and Senate and putting George Bush here in my chair. Everybody seems to have a must list of legislation at the end of the session. I have a list of musts and must nots that I'd like to share with you. As I said with the press here, the nation needs a good drug bill passed before you leave town. And Bob, when we Get the general discussion. I hope you'll give us your assessment of whether we'll see a good drug bill before adjournment. On the textiles bill, you, you plug your ears. <laughs> I hope you change your position. No, I still think we will stop this protection bill. You just bill. go back to your commitment, 1980, when you. <laughs> And I'm hoping the House will sustain my veto. This <laughs> but on labor legislation, Bob and others have been doing a great job keeping away from my desk bills that extend mandatory federal regulation into every business in America. And Bob, please stick with that. On judicial nominations, Strom, I hear that, uh, uh, and Mel Simpson, that. You've both been working some magic, and I hope they'll, that the both of you will fill us in in a few minutes when <clears throat> we get to that. But now let me turn to Bob Dole and then Bob Michael for comments on the outlook for the remaining days of the 100th Congress. I'll keep talking here to you, Swap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, for starters, gentlemen, uh, please tell us when will you adjourn? <laughs> I just told Bob <laughs> they're trying to stay in the chamber because he doesn't have floor privileges, so they can stay in there and avoid it. But uh, he told me yesterday, he said, well, if we don't finish this week, maybe we'll finish a week from Saturday. Mr. President? Well, Mr. President, President can you give me sound? Good to see you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And the Minister of Commerce, Mr. President? How do you do? And our Foreign Minister, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And then the ambassador of Washington. Yeah. Nice to see you. Nice. And Ambassador Blackington, yes. our ambassador. Good to see you. Chastity. 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 Well, come in. 
I know we only have a few minutes. So folks, we have to see that. This is the president. Seth is a nice well, it's a great pleasure to welcome you to the White House. Knowing this is the first occasion of, of this kind since the country gained independence. And I also note that arriving in your nation with the first Peace Corps volunteers. I welcome the improved relations that this reflects. We appreciate very much your government and your personal efforts in bringing about national reconciliation in Angola. Chairman of the Lusophone Presidency, I pronounce that correctly. <laughs> well, you're playing a key role in helping bring peace to Southern Africa. I know that Guinea Bissau is expanding its relations with Western countries and is engaged in important economic reforms at home. This is Larry Rivers. And Larry Rivers, Hello, Larry. Larry, Chief for the VFW. Well, yes, congratulations. Thank you, sir. It just happened uh, yes, sir, in August month ago. at the Chicago Convention. It's well, a real pleasure to meet you, sir. Well, incidentally, and thank you and thank the veterans for some of those resolutions that were passed there at that convention. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Mr. President. Make sure you get some of those. Oh. Mr. Yes. Cooper Hall. Cooper Hall, Mr. Director. President. It's good to see you again, sir. You know, Mr. President, how are you? That's our friend. These are our friends. Yes, you bet they are. <laughs> I know. They've been most supportive of things that we've been trying to do. Thank you. Mr. President, if you would <clears throat> allow me a copy of our resolutions passed. Oh. The convention. I know. They, and some of them had to do with our efforts in Central America, I know, and a yes, number of other things. That well, we kind. appreciate your efforts in Central America as well. Uh, since I'll have the opportunity of being the last Commander-in-Chief to meet with you, first of all, thank you on behalf of the other eight that you've oh. greeted so cordially in the uh, Oval Office, and we would like to pre present you with our Certificate of Merit, which has been brought in, as well as the Gold Medal of Merit, thanking you for oh. your years of turn service. Yes. 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 <laughs> all right. All right. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate it very much. Well, you served yes. me greatly, and I'm very proud to have this. Thank you, Mr. President. And this. Thank you, sir. And we've also you've got you back to endorse Bush again. Yeah, we endorse oh. you twice, please. We've got Bush back. Hey, that's Can great. Can you hold the medal up one more time for a picture? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you. Mr. President, thank you very much. Well, listen, great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Good luck, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So good to see you, Mama, my wife, Dottie. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Francis Wells, President of the Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Good afternoon. My Secretary of Transportation, Jim Harrington. Mr. President, how are you? Mr. President, we're delighted to have this opportunity to visit with you today. We've got a special presentation that we want to make. You know, we've had a joint effort on the national and local level and state level yes, about getting the drunk drivers off of our nation's highways. You're familiar with not only the Mothers Against Drunk Driving, the MAD organization, and the Students Against, so that whether they're mad, sad, or glad, we're going to get the drunk drivers off of our roads. And I wanted to have the honor of uh, presenting this pen to you and pinning it on you, if I may do that. Well, all right. Yes, sir. May we as our national, yeah, here, here. As our national <laughs> chairman of government leaders against drunk drivers. Well, and I know some of the success, too. I know there's been a 14% okay, decrease in, uh, in uh, teenagers under 21. Mm -hmm. And of course, I know what one of you helped do in, in getting all 50 states to ban the sale of liquor to you under 21. And then there has been, I believe, for teenage, I think the uh, 
it's dropped 34 percent. Yes, sir. For that. And North Carolina's president exceeds all the national averages. Be better. Now that I'm the property dressed, <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, sure. uh, North Carolina's really I'm not going to leave. <laughs> yes, You're just mad, <laughs> Lady Francis. But she has helped to help us promote this oh, with other right. government right. leaders and governors and legislators. That's glad too. And all it's gone. Well. Government, you can appreciate it. It's in, I think, about 30 states now, and we are trying to get all 50 states to. We've had some that order as many as 110, and one state ordered only four. They said we don't have many government leaders against North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can something about that. That's the beginning. Send a message back and tell them to sober up. I wanted to tell you that uh, all of the men that I have that, that know that I am coming up here said wanted me to tell you hello. My youngest son said he voted for you twice. He wished he could vote for you again. Well, pretty good for a 10-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> and um, all the women wanted me to give you a hug. May I give you a hug for all the women? We love you. Yes, we really do. And we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you all for all that you're doing here. As the national chairman, I'm glad now that'll help us to get this promoted all over the country. Thank you, Mr. President. You know, alcohol is our number one abused drug. Yes, really. Mm -hmm. It is. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Good to see y'all, too.